Okay, so Outlander made me want to cry like three times tonight. I'm trying really hard not to right now. <laughs> I mean, normally I don't do reaction videos, but I literally just watched the episode and I, I just couldn't wait to talk about it. So I definitely feel like this was one of the best episodes of season four. We got a lot more to the story. We got to see the return of a character, which we have been waiting for. <laughs> and I am just... I'm so in awe with this episode. It was really well done. And it wasn't what I expected it to be. So... Okay, let me... <laughs> I'm gonna try to do a review, but I'm mostly just gonna talk about the scenes that were really, like, impactful. And we started with, uh... I am always afraid I'm going to say her name wrong, and I really don't want to. Let me see if I can figure it out. Um, where is it? Okay, I think it's Adewehi. Adewehi. I hope I'm saying that right. First of all, I am so sad about her character. I thought we were going to get more of her character the whole season, but... Uh, God. Like, she and Claire had this nice moment at the beginning of the episode. They were bonding, they were teaching each other their languages, and discussing herbs, and she asked Claire about if she had children, and she mentioned her daughter, and out of way he said that she is here. So, she ha has this uh, gift to... Like, she has dreams, and she can kind of see the future, and she knows what's going on, so it kind of tells you Brianna is there. <laughs> so I liked that moment in the episode as well, and I thought we were going to see more of her bonding with Claire in the episode, but we didn't, and now I know why. <laughs> but I'm not going to get into that yet. Um... So basically, Claire is, she's like a healer in the area. She goes to visit the Mueller's, a German family that's located not too far from Fraser's Ridge. And she helps give birth to a baby, baby girl, yeah. And the family is so nice to her. They're so grateful for her bringing a healthy baby into the world. And... They even named the baby after her, which was so sweet. And the the woman who's the grandmother says that I will share my grandchild with you, and that was so sweet. <laughs> like, the family meant well. Unfortunately, the grandfather and his son are rather... Uh, af let's say afraid, because they kind of are. They're afraid of the Cherokee, who come to borrow some water for the horses, and Claire sees the side of them, and she tries to intervene, she tries to make peace between them, she convinces the Cherokee to move upstream, and they agree to do so because she is a friend of Adewehi. So, like, it seemed like that was all solved. Unfortunately, <laughs> not not in the way we had hoped. So even though that got resolved, the uh, I I think his name is Air Air Mueller. He saw one of the natives put like a I don't know if it was like a dust of some kind, but it's supposed to be a blessing, as Claire does explain to them. But they believe that it brings on the measles because not too long after that, his daughter and son and grandchild get the measles and they all die. So, unfortunately, he assumes that the Cherokee cursed them. I know, always bad timing with these things. So, the pastor, I can't remember his name... Sorry. Even if I found it, I couldn't pronounce it. 
but he comes to warn Claire that Air is really upset and grieving and that he blames Claire and the Cherokee for what happened. So Claire could very well be in danger. So she basically arms herself and she's ready to take him on if she needs to. And eventually he does get to the cabin. And might I say, they really needed locks on those doors. He just walks right in. <laughs> anyway, so he tells Claire what happened, and he actually was concerned about Claire, afraid that she might have contracted the measles as well. However, he still blames the Cherokee. He tells her so. He calls them savages, and he believes that they cursed the land and caused the measles. And it seems like he's calming down when he hands Claire this, like, covered-up blanket, which originally contained a doll for the grandchild. And Claire assumes that it's the same doll. Unfortunately, when she opens it, it's not the doll. It's Attawahi's scalp. And that was so, so sad. Like, I was not expecting that. That really shocked me. And he says he did it because she was the witch. Even though Claire tries to explain that she was the healer of the Cherokee. But the guy is just, he's not going to see it any other way. So Claire finally asks him to leave, and she's so heartbroken over it. She was really connecting with her and bonding, and she was building a bridge with her. And then to see that her friend was just taken away like that, that was... And she didn't deserve to die. She was really amazing and sweet. We only knew her for like a couple of scenes. <sighs> Honestly, that was just so sad. Oh, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> and honestly, the actress who played her, she was really, really good. I wish we could have seen more of her. But just the fact that she made an impact in just the two scenes she was in, that is an, it's just amazing. <laughs> but sad way for the character to go. But she definitely had an impact on Claire, and I like it when characters do that for other characters. So, back to the story. Um, basically, the Cherokee don't take this lightly, which I knew that was going to happen. They set fire to the Mueller's cabin, and in the process they kill the wife and heir as well. And I felt bad for the wife, because she, she was really innocent in all of this. Like, they were all brought up to believe that the natives were savages. And unfortunately, she pays for her husband's crimes. So I felt bad, like she loses children and then she dies that way. But, ah, oh, there's just so many people to feel bad for in this episode. Um, but at the same time, Air, he, he kind of got what he deserved. He did not handle that right at all. But it's really interesting how it plays into the theme of who is the savage. And one of the Cherokee men in the last episode said, most often, like, man is monster. And we definitely see that come into play in this episode. So I thought they really continued that theme really well. It's just so sad. Um, anyway. And then, now let's get into the somewhat happier moments where I wanted to cry for joy. <laughs> so, young Ian and Jamie go into town. They're trying to recruit settlers for Fraser's Ridge. And it seems like nobody's biting the deal because... Even though they offer, like, rent-free land, they don't want to live on land where it's governed by the British. So, that's kind of the issue that Jamie's dealing with. 
it's kind of like the the clause in the contract that he was gonna have to deal with but anyway so eventually they decide to leave and unfortunately like the champ on the horse's reins was broken so young Ian goes to the blacksmith and this <laughs> this scene oh my god I had a feeling, like just the way they were leading into it, you could tell something was coming. And I, I had honestly read spoilers, but I didn't know all the details. So young Ian walks into the blacksmith shop, and he's trying to get the blacksmith to fix the champ. And the voice, the second you hear it, you know who it is. And finally we see the reveal of Murtaugh <laughs> and I was so happy to see him because I didn't know when he was gonna come in to the season and we didn't know exactly what part he was gonna play because in the books he actually dies on Culloden so this is kind of like a what-if scenario and it's kind of like the best what-if you could have asked for <laughs> but anyway he doesn't recognize young Ian because he never knew him and obviously same goes for young Ian so they're arguing and hassling about fixing the champ and eventually Murtaugh takes all the money that Ian has and then when Ian tells Jamie Jamie's furious about it he goes to confront the blacksmith they well Murtaugh hears his voice turns around and they officially reunite. So I thought that scene was so well done. I mean, I had tears in my eyes. I wanted to cry. I rarely cry for joy. <laughs> so, oh my god, it was just like the scene we have all been waiting for. And I was so happy to finally see it. It was like a dream come true. Like one of the dream come trues out of the season, but... <laughs> and... Eventually, they go out to the pub, and once they have young Ian leave the table for a second, Jamie tells Murtaugh about Claire returning and about how he has a daughter in 1971, and, like, Murtaugh's so happy about it, and it's just like, we have been waiting for this moment, <laughs> and it's just such a beautiful reunion and it's like no time has passed and I always love it when there are those moments where it's like all that time in between and it's like your friends again your family again so that was really nice and what happens is Murta actually takes Jamie and young Ian to a meeting and this explains why the men don't want to live on governed land by the British. They are gonna pay their taxes, but at the same time they are planning a rebellion. And this actually is eventually gonna lead into the Revolutionary War. So Murtaugh is a part of this. <laughs> so Jamie, unfortunately, he has Claire and young Ian to think of, and he also it's also stated in the contract, like, he can't get into these kind of things. So, the best he can do is just stay neutral. And he does tell Murtaugh, like, if you'll... We will still have you visit us. We would like that. And eventually, once Jamie returns home, obviously he's told Claire about Murtaugh. So, she's outside gathering wood. She turns because she hears the whistle. The whistle is the tune of Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. And if you guys watched season one, you will know what that is. And she turns and sees Marta. <laughs> and it's another happy reunion. And it's just so heartwarming. I just, I wanted to cry in this scene too. Because these are moments like you've been dreaming of and you're finally seeing it happen. And it was just, just perfect. So 
the family is reunited and I think they handled it really well bringing Murtaugh back when technically he was no longer alive I thought it worked really well but yes it was I just can't stress enough how happy I am <laughs> so to get to the last part of the episode we don't see much of this but Roger is trying to pinpoint where Brianna has gone. He learns from a taxi driver that Brianna was left at Craigna Dune, which kind of tells you probably where she went. <laughs> so he's trying to figure out if she might have left something behind, and he tells her that she stayed at an inn, which I believe is the same inn that Frank and Claire stayed at. And Ms. Baird is her name. She tells him that she doesn't know if there's anything she left, but she does say that she did stay there. And she sees how heartbroken Roger is. She comes out with a letter. The letter was apparently supposed to be given to Roger a year later. And when he's reading the letter at the end of the episode, we see Brianna at the stones. <laughs> so we see her slowly walking up to the main stone, and she's telling Roger that she did learn about something awful that happens to her parents. Same thing that Roger probably found out in the last episode. We don't know how she found this out yet, and we might see how that happened in the next episode. I don't know. I hope we do. Because I know there's a scene where she visits Frank's grave. I'm sure of it. Anyway. <laughs> but the scene was perfect. I predicted this was going to happen where she walks to the stone, you see the stone like cover her, and then you see the other side, and she's gone. I knew they were going to do that. <laughs> but this episode was so amazing, and like so much happened. <laughs> and it's just, I think this was definitely the best so far. We have a lot more to come. I'm very excited for season four. Now that we are finally like really getting into the deep part of the storyline. And I can't wait to see Brianna and Jamie meet for the first time. That is supposed to be a really big scene. And I don't know how they're going to handle it in the show compared to the book. But we will see. Alright guys, thank you for listening to this. <laughs> I had so much to get out of my system. <laughs> and I tried to make it like a recap, review, reaction video. You know, I'm just, there's a lot to talk about. I don't always maybe label my videos accurately, but I, I try to just do recaps. I try to stay neutral sometimes to my opinions, but I definitely definitely had to talk about this episode because this one was this made me feel so many emotions and I'm sure you guys also went along on the journey with me <laughs> so yeah and we have so much in store next episode looks a bit intense we get to see Lord John return as well as young William who Apparently is causing trouble, but he's Jamie's son, so what do we expect? <laughs> Alright guys, I can't wait till next episode. I will see you next week. Hope you enjoyed the video, the episode, everything. Please subscribe, I'm going to do more reviews. Definitely planning to do one for every episode of Outlander. And also, speaking of time traveling, I'm just going to throw this out here. If you guys watch Timeless, do know there is going to be a two-part movie event, I believe December 20th. Please look it up. There's information online. I believe they have articles from a few days ago. But please, do watch it. It's a really good show, and unfortunately it didn't get its chance to live its full life on TV. But I'm glad they're at least doing like a finale for it, so better than nothing. <laughs> Alright, I will see you guys next week for Outlander. Have a good night, have a good day, bye!